Okay, so tonight I'm going to go over what we did in class today and also do one of the problems that I sent home on the homework. So uh, the thing we focused on today in class is multiplying a whole number by a fraction. So I'm going to pull one of the problems from our homework. Um, I think I'll do... Let's see... Let's do 5 eighths times 3. That's like question number 4 on the homework. So again, 5 eighths multiplied by 3. 5 eighths multiplied by 3. So, <clears throat> um, obviously we have a fraction, which is our 5 over 8. And then we also have a whole number, which is our 3. Um, anytime we multiply fractions, we want to make sure that if one of the things we're multiplying is a fraction, that the other thing is also a fraction. So, um, 5 eighths is already a fraction, so we're just going to leave it the way it is, okay? Obviously, we're multiplying. Um, that's the operation that we're doing. And then 3 being our whole number, to make that into a fraction, we would put a 1 underneath it. So it would just be 3 over 1, okay? Now, the nice part about multiplying fractions is we don't have to have a common denominator. We only have to have a common denominator when we add and subtract. So what we can do is actually just multiply it straight across. So 5 times 3 is 15, and 8 times 1 is 8. Now, this is the part that I have noticed that my students have the hardest time with. Um, they can do up to this point pretty easily, um, but it's this part that, that tends to make things get a little bit messy for them. So 15 over 8 is what we call an improper fraction. And we call that an improper fraction because the number on top is larger than the number on the bottom. So this 15 is bigger than this 8, okay? So we need to fix that. And we fix that um, by making it into what we call a mixed number. And a mixed number is a whole number followed by a fraction. So 15 over 8, I'm just going to rewrite it down here so I can um, do the work. 15 over 8, we have to look at how many times can 8 fit into 15 without going over. So if we count by 8, um, I'm just going to kind of make a note over here on the side. 8, 16, 24, okay? We can see that 8 fits into 15 only one time without going over. If we do it two times, that 16 is bigger than 15, so we can't do that. So we're going to say that 8 fits one entire time, and then we have to think about it like this, okay? 1 multiplied by 8 is equal to 8, but we have to get from 8 to 15. So what do we add to the number 8 to get it to 15? And I always just count on my fingers um, just as that visual representation for them. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So then we have 7. And we bring that bottom number over, okay, our denominator. We bring that right over. So our final answer, because 7 eighths cannot be reduced, is 1 and 7 eighths. Now, there's a sure way to check this. Um, I always tell my students, if you get 15 over 8 and you're unsure if that seems right or not, or let's say we get to 1 and 7 eighths and we don't feel like that's that's right and we're we're kind of doubting ourselves um there's another way to take that mixed number which is one and seven eighths and turn it back into an improper fraction so i'm going to show you that just so you can see why one and seven eighths is the same as 15 over eight okay so if we have the fraction one and seven eighths to change that back to an improper fraction you take your bottom number so in this case, it's 8, and you multiply it by the big number. So 8 multiplied by 1 is just 8. Then you add 7 to that. So 8 times 1 is 8, plus 7 is 15. 
and you bring that denominator straight over. So you can see that this is the same as this. It's just one is an improper fraction, one is a mixed number. And that's just a, that's just a in case, you know, you feel like 50 or one and seven eighths doesn't seem right. Um, thing I've noticed in class is the improper fractions are the hardest for them. So they can get to this point, 15 over eight, and then they're like, I don't remember what to do after that, okay? Um, so there will be some more practice in the future on this, but I also wanna show you another way to do the same exact problem, um, but I want to do it using a picture because models are a great way to help kids learn. I learn from pictures. I always seem to do better if I have a picture or a visual to look at. So I'm gonna show you how to do 5 eighths multiplied by three using pictures. So same problem, 5 eighths multiplied by three. So whenever we are going to use models to, to um, do a problem like this, we always first look at our whole number and our whole number in this case is three. And I always use, I always use candy bars, loaf of bread, something like that just to help them you know, be able to think through the problem. So I'll say, okay, we're gonna draw three whole candy bars because we have three holes, okay? I'm gonna draw them kind of longer, like a rectangle, okay? We have three whole candy bars, okay? Now, our fraction tells us that these candy bars are cut into eight pieces. So I'm gonna very carefully, hopefully I can do this and not mess it up, make these candy bars into eight pieces. Five, six, oh no. Pretend that didn't happen. Five, six. Okay, eight pieces. This is not the best drawing. Okay, pretend they're even, pretend they're beautiful, okay. So we have Eight pieces here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just wanted to check. There, eight pieces here, eight pieces here. The other thing I like to do is I like to label these one, two, and three, okay? And that represents that three that I circled in green at the top. Okay, so we split them into eight pieces because our fraction says that there's eight pieces. Then I like to say, okay, we're gonna take five pieces and color them in, or you can say, when I color them, I take them away from each of these candy bars. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, from candy bar number one. Now we have to do that three times because of the three holes, so let's do it again. One, two, three, four, and five, okay? And we're gonna do it one more time. One, two, three, four, and five. We color in five pieces because our numerator, which is right here, tells us that that's what we're gonna color in, okay? So, then what I like to say is, okay, we've colored in a piece or a fraction of each of these holes, okay? We have three whole candy bars and we've taken away some of them, okay? The red represents um, us taking some of them away, okay? So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna count up how many pieces you colored in all together. So I colored in five from the first candy bar, five from the second, and five from the third, which gives me a total of 15 pieces. 15 pieces are colored in, and I use the same denominator. Now this is important, the denominator is this eight right here, I'm gonna use red and just circle it extra nice. So. This is important because our denominator always stays the same, so it's eight. So I colored in 15, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or three times five, 15 pieces out of eight, which the candy bar was cut into originally. Okay, that should look familiar to you, 15 over eight. Again, improper fraction, and we change it to a mixed number. So how many times can eight fit into 15? Well, if we're here, eight, 16, 24, we can see that eight only fits once. 
We don't want to do twice or three times because those numbers are larger than 15. So eight fits one time with seven left over and eight as our denominator because it always stays the same. And then for fun, we can change it back if we're unsure or having doubts about it. Eight times one is eight plus seven is 15. Denominator stays the same. Okay, I hope this helps. This is number four on your math homework. Um, the fifth one that I've crossed out, I told the students today not to do that one because I accidentally wrote that one twice. If you notice, it looks a lot like number four. Um, and so I just told them not to worry about that one. The last one on this page about Mr. Thompson's car, um, there is a trick to doing, well, I'll just write it on this page actually. There's another way of actually, uh, a trick I told my students today. Anytime you see thirds, for instance, like in this problem, two thirds of, anytime you see the word of, it's really important in math to think of multiplication. Okay, so it says the gas tank of Mr. Thompson's car holds 15 gallons of gas. He used two thirds of a tank of gas last week. Oh, that's a typo, I see it now. How many gallons of gas did he use? So two thirds of 15, which would be the same as two thirds multiplied by 15. And then you would just do it using a model or the other way that I showed you in the first. Okay, um, with you tomorrow. If you need any extra help, I can definitely um, help you tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Have a great night.